Most people think that video games are a waste of time. But what if I told you it could actually be an inspiration to save? Now I get it, it's hard to save money and that's because our brains are hardwired for instant gratification, which is great when you're a hunter gatherer, but it's kind of a problem when you have long-term saving goals. Enter gamification, which is just applying game design and techniques to non-gaming situations. Not to get all preschool teacher on you, but gamification makes learning about finances actually fun. Today, I am excited to talk to Matt and Shelby, the two talented creatives and gamers behind Girlfriend Reviews. They're building an audience and using their expertise with game techniques to start saving towards a down payment. I'm Gabe Bolt, here to show you the small shifts that you can make in your life that will lead to a huge impact on your financial future. This is Big Change. You're probably already familiar with gamification and finances. You've ever heard of credit card points? Adding a competitive edge with scoring, rewards, and challenges affects us psychologically. Your brain is so mentally engaged that you're able to learn and retain information better. You're getting pleasure from the process. Game designers even have a word for it, fiero. It's an Italian word for proud. They use it to describe the feeling of accomplishment we get from winning a game. Thing is, there are tons of different game styles and techniques, so where do we start? That's why I brought along Matt and Shelby of Girlfriend Reviews. We're gonna be exploring different ways that you can gamify your finances, saving milestones they set as a couple, and thresholds they wanted to meet before they moved into their dream apartment and rewards that they gave themselves along the way. Matt and Shelby, thank you guys very much for joining me today. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thanks for having us. So would you mind just telling us a little bit about how you got started with this and when gaming transitioned from a hobby into more of a profession? While he's always been making YouTube content, he's never really wanted to get in front of the camera and mm -hmm. I live for that. So we've always <laughs> kind of joked about it uh, and it wasn't until like a year or two into our relationship that we actually were just like, you know what? Uh, let's do it. We have a lot of funny yeah, things to say about We have the technology. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot we of funny things. created girlfriend reviews. Exactly. And our first video took off and that was it. Well, I'm really glad that you did it. You guys have had a ton of success in just the short time you've been doing this. It's been really cool to watch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do you each have a style or a genre of game that you like to play the most? Uh, my favorite type of game is usually an open world that I get to explore and discover on my own. The freedom to do that. Um, what about you? Um, I kind of, I kind of go back and forth between bloody, gory first-person shooter and cute little life simulator. The duality of man. Absolutely. My thing. I'm really competitive. How do you find the right game that fits your personality? Boy, that's a good question. And kind of one of my favorite questions whenever someone comes into a stream and is like, "How do I get my wife into gaming?" Or "How do I find a game that so and so is gonna like?" Um, I would say you gotta dabble with the easy stuff in different genres and then kind of see what feels the best and then each genre, each type of game has a million others very similar to it. Yeah. So there's gonna be something for everyone out there. Yeah, sort of the beauty of the gaming industry is I would say there's even more content there than in film and television. And so there's really something for everyone um, so whatever your interests are, there's definitely someone who's gamified it for mm -hmm. sure. Do you guys apply the, the gamification that you were talking about to other things like in your life, like your finances or doing chores or anything oh, like definitely. that? Yeah. Well, I think just in our finances and our accumulation of things like microphones and cameras and, and that kind of stuff, we've sort of, we, we look at it as our inventory mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does feel like, uh, especially with finances because you can't produce content without putting some money into it and the more money that you put into it the more professional it will start to feel mm -hmm. so we really started at level one with our finances and our production mm -hmm. me hiding under a blanket with a really cheap mm -hmm. 50 dollar microphone recording our videos so as we started to uh, generate more income from the videos that we were making, we were able to save more money, set that aside and level up mm -hmm. our production and level up our lives. 
Totally. I love the idea of looking at your life like you've got an avatar you got to check in on and like how can you improve it like maybe no procrastinating. Yeah, nothing will truly ever help me stop procrastinating, but <laughs> that definitely does help. <laughs> So in, in video games, you kind of get rewarded and you can unlock stuff. Um, do you guys like reward yourself for hitting your own personal goal? Yeah, yeah. definitely. For I mean, sure. usually the, the goal is the reward. <laughs> like uh, when we first started getting sponsors, uh, the number one thing on our list was getting a, a new computer, a nice computer to make our games look better, make our streams look better, and then make our videos look better through the video editing. So we you know set all that money aside until we could finally afford that and then when we reached the goal, the reward was the computer. Um, but it also, uh, there are rewards along the way that we we find, oh, you know, we save all that money, which we do. We can go maybe purchase something for fun online. We are able to buy like maybe a fancy board game that we've had our eyes on for a while mm -hmm. that kind of was a little bit more than we wanted to spend. It's just like a game. When you save up a certain amount of money in a game, then you can mm -hmm. finally purchase that weapon that you wanted forever and yeah. that will level up your gameplay as well. Do you guys have any like particular goals that you're shooting for next, like a you know a new house or a new computer or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I think that uh, one of our biggest goals right now is a set. So mm -hmm. we sort of have this here, but it's just a, a wall with some things that we've that we own. <laughs> we want to have a place where we can go, and it's always set up, and we don't have to reset up the lights and cameras and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's always just there, ready for us to sit down and record. The definitely the next big goal would be to move when our lease is mm -hmm. up um i don't know where that will be we're mm -hmm. we're kind of daydreaming and planning it now as we speak and setting aside money yeah. as much as possible to do that mm -hmm. are there any strategies or challenges you're doing to save up for that so shelby has created a very complicated excel sheet that you could call our inventory like in a video game where it's the item that we've acquired how much it costs and uh, how much we can write off on our taxes. And then um, that sort of money that we're writing off, that we're sort of saving, now that we're a, a channel about gaming, we can set that aside um, at the end of the year. So yeah. Right, and any money that we do make from brand deals or revenue from other sources, uh, we do immediately put it into savings and kind of take out what we need as we go. Mm -hmm. So most of the the ways that we save is just like okay straight into savings and then we can kind of decide what we need as we go yeah and as you hit those milestones it's sort of you can start to see how it levels up your options and your choices of what you might be able to purchase um so that's sort of gamification on its own is just hitting these milestones and leveling up your options in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Have you learned anything about finances as you've been saving up for that house? I think that what we've uh, needed to learn about finances is everything about finances. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we really started from square one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, adulting's hard. There's so much stuff that like you don't know that you don't know it. Yeah, I'm so it. glad that I, I like, had to really take algebra to three times, but nobody taught me how to save money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. You guys have that big goal of getting a house. Are there any like tricks or tips that you use to stay motivated as you, you push towards these different goals that you have, whether it's for your channel or your personal yeah. life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think our, our biggest motivation is probably um, our job. Yeah. We, we want to do the best that we can. And so we try to remind ourselves that, you know, getting a bigger place isn't just something nice for us. It is something that's an investment in the long run. I'm also a very visual person and I can almost imagine it like if you were playing a game and you would have your little uh, like objective up in the corner all the time. So it's always up there and you're always thinking about mm -hmm. it and looking at it and referring back to it. Yeah, like you feel like if you didn't complete that quest up there, like you didn't play the game right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like maybe we, if we don't achieve that goal, then we failed at the game of life. <laughs> <laughs> we failed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what the first like saving goals you guys uh, had as a couple? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say the mm -hmm. the biggest saving goal was me quitting my day job mm -hmm. and moving because at the time I was managing the apartment building we lived in. Yeah, she had a full time job while we were creating the channel. Right. Which allowed me to sort of quit my job mm -hmm. and focus on the channel. So our goal was sort of to make enough through YouTube and sponsors and Twitch and things like that to where Shelby could we could lose that income she was bringing in and 
rent a home and then turn it into a YouTube business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you guys very much for talking to me. It was great to get some tips from you guys and uh, best yeah, of Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. This was great. Yeah. Combine gamifying with your personality. It makes perfect sense. When we feel fear and anxiety about our finances, it can be comforting just to look at some cold, hard stats. But hands-on visual types or perfectionists who are far away from their goals can get nervous around charts and data. And if you're not the competitive type, you won't want to challenge someone, but hey, that's what two-person games are for. Team up and hold one another accountable. Long story short, try doing what Matt and Shelby did and create a game that fits you. It's psychologically gratifying to give yourself a quick win. What can you do today that will help you hit your goals? Maybe set up an automatic savings account or delete something from your online shopping cart. Start with little rewards and as you level up your goals, you can treat yourself to a little more. Try a no spend week, then maybe a no spend 30 day challenge. Remember that the fanfare and rewards are all part of the process. Eventually savings won't even feel like a game, it'll become an automatic process, second nature. In this case, winning doesn't just mean saving cash, it means building better money habits and becoming more financially savvy. So what's the first step? You've got to identify what motivates you and use that as a way to save. Then once you've got your savings on autopilot, it's time to start browsing for homes on rockethomes.com. Thank you to Matt and Shelby for joining me today. If you guys want to see more big change, you can click right over there. And don't forget to like and subscribe down, down there. <laughs>